You know, you have those thin air years where you live on crackers, water, you have just enough to barely get by. All your friends tell you to grow up, get real, stop chasing rainbows. You remember those people? I call that the not much crowd. You know, you know those people, you call them up and they want to talk to you about the weather and you ask them what's going on and they say not much. And then when you make it, these are the people who magically appear out of thin air and go, oh, we knew you could do it. <laughs> no matter where we are, we are in free enterprise. All of us in this room, we're all connected by being in free enterprise where there are no limits. And I'm not just talking about the money you can achieve, but the person you can become. From my perspective, money is a little overrated. It, it, you know, money is, love creates a world going round. I've also found that money pays for the trip. Have you also found that out? And it's your responsibility to allow yourself to get comfortable, not with money, but with receiving. Receiving is one of the most underdeveloped skills in America, in Canada, around the world. Would you agree? Now, we are, most of us are great at this. We're great at giving, aren't we? We give, 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 and we give, 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 and we give, 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 but what ends up happening is we end up giving a lot of our power away. Would you agree? And you know, there, there's a few words that are used in the English language, like this, debt, fear. Keep a society in debt and fear. They're very easily controlled and manipulated. And then the word debt, free. How many of you want to be debt free? How many of you want to be debt-free? Oh, yeah, I want to be debt-free. How many of you want to be debt-free? Oh, let me explain to you. You don't ever want to be debt-free. Debt-free is an oxymoron. It's like a large shrimp. You can of notice this? Like, debt and free. See, it's an oxymoron connected by one hyphen. You don't ever want to be debt-free. You want to be free, don't you? Debt-free means zero. And that's what the typical populace does. They actually get duped into believing they're debt-free by manipulating and managing their debt. So your objective, your objective in the next two to five years is to be in a position where you have more assets than you have liability. And what we're going to do with you in this next three days is assist you with the assets that you have within you. Because you already have everything you require to be. Be, be whatever. Be successful. Be prosperous. Be whoever you deserve to be. We're also going to assist you with one of the most important words in the English language, deserving. So it comes from a Latin word that means day of service, day servier. Now, if you, if you enter a profession called sales, oh, I don't want to be a salesman, saleswoman, where well, you're going to be doing one of two things. You're going to be buying or selling, and you want to be selling. Because there, you, seriously, you want to get comfortable with the fact that you are marketing your own energy because that's what you're selling. And you want to get comfortable with the fact that you're comfortable enough with yourself that you can receive. And this is see, receiving brings up a lot of contradictions, doesn't it, Wayne? And many people who operate a non-profit organization from the discomfort of their home, you have to think about that a second. How many of you have one of those right now? A non-profit organization that you operate from the discomfort of your own home. It means your enterprise, it means you're not creating one of the most important words in free enterprise is profit. You're in business for two words, fun and profit. Because I'll tell you this, baby, if it ain't fun, you're going to procrastinate. How many of you found that out? And you will find all the ways known to mankind to wear out your carpet. You'll walk from one end of the house to the other, getting ready to get ready, getting all of your ducks in line. How many of you do this? How many of you presently do this? Okay, so let's, let's practice a little exercise to, to kind of get us started. For you, for you, which would be I, me, you want to be in present tense, you want to say I. Can everyone say I? I. I, I is underrated. I. I is underrated. Most people say you. You know when you struggle and you go, oh yeah, I'm struggling. You don't ever want to let anyone bring you into their drama. Because there's a lot of drama and chaos out there, isn't there? Have you noticed? And people are willing to bring you into their drama and most importantly their anxiety. You see, we as a society get addicted to our emotions. And the emotions that we get addicted to are hate, anger, guilt, resentment, abandonment, rejection, and overwhelmed feelings. And any time your body, the physical body, which is the mind-body connection, any time our body goes into one of these emotions, it releases a biochemical or a neural peptide. So what this means is neurons that wire together fire together. And it's the reason that we do, the, right Joe? It's the reason we do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. And we try and convince ourselves to do what we perceive to be painful. Now, if you ever really allowed yourself to understand the LOM, the laws of marketing, if you ever really 
started to understand what is required for me, that would be I, to become successful, then the whole process would be a whole different level of ease, E-A-S-E, -E, which is an acronym you can break down to E-Z. Now, if you can operate in the E-Z zone, that would, you would be an easyologist rather than a hard A-holic. How many of you practice the art of hardism far too much? How many, of you, how many of you struggle way too much? How many of you know that much of your life you've been addicted to the struggle? Seriously, I'm, not, I'm asking you to, to consider this. One of the most underrated situations in the world is the word objective. Because when I become objective, that means I'm taking a look at myself objectively without judging myself. Now, what, the reason that most people aren't successful in their own enterprise is they spend too much time in their own judgment. It means they're too critical of, them, of themselves. So critical, in fact, that they can't let other people into their space. How many of you do this? How many of you know you do this? And to get comfortable in this process means you start with a series of affirmations that say, I am good enough. I am lovable. I am a receiver. I am. The power of the spoken word is very important, isn't it? The power of the spoken word, because you're going to get exactly what you speak. What you think about, you end up bringing about. So if you start to take ownership of where I am today, that would be this. My enterprise. You don't want to have a business, because if you have a small business, you'll typically run out of time. You want to learn how to leverage your most valuable commodity, which is time, right? And you want to learn this, to turn time into money, time into results, time into connections, and most importantly, time into collaborations. Your objective is to find as many people as possible, and this would be in the 80-20 principle, as many people as possible that you can collaborate with. Because if you can attract, see the law of attraction, if you can learn to attract people you can collaborate with, then there's never any competition. And that, my friends, is the game. That is the law of attraction. People that I can collaborate with share ideas. In this game called free enterprise, you want to allow yourself to get to a position where your highs are lows, and your lows are like this. It's called the flatline effect. It means emotionally, you don't get so excited that you're actually, your, excitement's your excitement is connected to your anger. You want to get to a point where your excitement is not motivation, it's inspiration. Because see, motivation wears off. Have you noticed? You go to a seminar, oh man, I'm jacked up, I'm jacked sideways, I'm pumped, oh, I can't wait for Monday. But you want to be able to move from motivation to inspiration, and most importantly, transformation. Because transformation is where the law of compounding starts to catch up with you. And until you experience this, it's very challenging to explain. Kathy, you, could, you can understand this. Until you experience the, the law of compensation and the law of compounding, it's very difficult to explain, but it's kind of like this. It's like when money comes, you wonder where it's been hiding. How many of you, how many of you can relate to what I'm talking about? You go through several years of being challenged, and I stop using the word struggle, but, and I stop using the word broke, because the word broke is connected to a word meaning broken. And if you really study the English language, a lot of our words come from Latin, which will give you the derivative of almost every word, which then allows you to start to transform the way you speak, because the way you speak will be exactly what you attract. Now, if you started to develop a profile of exactly what you deserve and what you seek, You'll change who shows up in your life, and the clues and the signs will show up in your voicemail box. And when some of these clues and signs show up in your voicemail box, you want to be going right on.